Hello, that is Front Page Africa, live at the Water Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C., the United States of America, where the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit is currently taking place. My name is Gerald Kwanine. I've been covering this event for Front Page Africa. It officially commenced on December 13 and it will be climaxing today. There is the International Media Center where the foreign press gather to follow the event and other events that are taking place. And I'm here with my colleagues from the state broadcaster ELBC Shortly, we will be having an interview with the Commissioner of Liberia Maritime Authority, the Honorable Len Eugene Nangwe. He will be giving us his assessment of the summit. He is part of the Liberian government delegation that is headed by President George Manuia. Currently, they are in plenary meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden, and the media has not been called. We understand later on there will be a working lunch where President Biden will be meeting with all foreign leaders, and the media will be invited. Fortunately, Front Page Africa has been granted access to that event. It will be held 2 o'clock United States time, Washington DC time, and 2 o'clock would be 7 p.m. in Monrovia. Shortly, we hope to be joined by Commissioner Namwe to speak with us, the library media, front page Africa to be specific, and the Liberia Broadcasting System shortly. In the build up to that, we we'll continue to just give you the atmosphere here. As I said, it is the International Media Center and where the foreign press and sit to file in my report and to cover the event when called in or to follow by to follow live on any of these uh, screens you are seeing here and just to inform you what's been happening here so far today is the the last day day three and the program the summit started with the opening of the Africa and Africa Diaspora Youth Leadership Summit. It was held at the African American Museum where the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State opened the forum and Liberia President George Weah gave the remarks and in that he called on African governments to create a Conducive, conducive atmosphere to allow the diaspora community to thrive. So shortly. Okay, that's good. If there is okay. No, I want to. I want to. So shortly will be joined by. The Maritime Commissioner, the Honorable Len Eugene Nangwe, to give us his assessment of the summit so far. So I'm waiting for my click to complete the setup and then we will be speaking 
to the Commissioner of Marta, a member of the Liberian delegation. That is the Foreign Media Center, where journalists of various countries across the continent are covering. Mm -hmm. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, thanks. Sir, thanks for you have been um, with the president uh, and today for the past three days. Today, uh, this conference is to be climaxed. What is your impression? Well, the U.S. Africa Leader Summit provided a very great platform for our president and his colleagues to interact with uh, U.S. government officials on issues affecting the continent. Apart from the official engagements, uh, there were multiple bilateral engagements and other multilateral engagements in different sectors. Uh, also, there were several cohorts and several, the way the conference itself was, the summit itself was organized, was in a manner that would enable uh, multiple sectors, sectoral discussions. This provided a very good opportunity for African leaders to uh, engage their American counterparts and have a common agenda and reset our relationship with the U.S. For President we are in particular, uh, he was the first president to have spoken. He addressed issues regarding how our diaspora uh, brothers and sisters can be of, of import to the development of Africa itself and Liberia in particular. And since then, he has had several other uh, bilateral meetings. Uh, we had the opportunity for the president to meet with the deputy administrator of the UNTP. And, and during that meeting, community development was discussed. And the UN is now finalizing a program along with the government of Liberia, which will be announced very shortly uh, to the tune of around $100 million for community engagement and community activities to impact. What is that? Community impact. engagement? What does that mean? Well, during the president's tour of the various counties, most uh, communities, most uh, districts throughout the country propose uh, a variety of, of development projects that we wanted to impact them. Okay. And based on those engagements, uh, we have served with our partners and we have crafted a program, a community development program that is at the cops of being launched. So when the president goes back, we'll conclude that. So the meeting with the UNDP uh, uh, deputy head was for us to discuss that and to have a consummation of it. But the total cost of that project is around $100 million. And the president's engagement with President Biden uh, at the multilateral discussion, it was he, along with uh, uh, five of his colleagues, uh, they were selected amongst countries that are going to elections and countries that have strong democratic credentials. Yesterday somebody asked me, say, oh, <coughs> they only call them because they are going to elections. No, there are more countries going to elections than the six. But those are the six that have demonstrated the tenets of democratic uh, uh, governance and therefore the president was pleased to engage uh, with those members of the African delegations. The president, we are uh, spent uh, close to two hours totally in the company of uh, President Biden. We had a lot of private discussions. Uh, and, and Any dividend the, in that discussion? The, the first dividend is that the United States has committed $165 million to elections in the six countries. Uh, so meaning Liberia, as you recall, we have advanced to the U.S. government Hello. through President uh, Riyadh uh, a proposal Please for additional to support to our electoral process. Because for President Riyadh, Elections is key to peace and security in Liberia. So the entire package for the six countries is 165 million, but we are targeting to get around 20 million of that. And, and when a president visits a country and these uh, uh, overarching pronouncements are made, the technicians now go day to day to work out the details of, of uh, the discussion that have been held. Uh, as I, also, President, we have been re-invited to the U.S. So he'll be coming back in a few months based on an invitation from President Biden. He'll be here in March, uh, I think March 28th. But uh, the diplomat, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, His Excellency D. Maxwell Sakimea, who was also in a meeting at the White House, 
has been mandated to work out the diplomatic arrangement with the State Department, but the President is expected to come back to Washington, D.C., and he has another invitation from President Biden, uh, along with a few other presidents, not the entire 50 this time. But not just uh, uh, African presidents, some other presidents, including President Macron, will also be attending uh, this meeting that has been called to which President Biden has invited President Weah again. So our engagement with the U.S. continues. And one of the points that the president struck at the White House was that Liberia has a strong historic relationship with the U.S. And we have proven ourselves now as a bastion for peace and security and a bastion for democracy. So therefore, we want a deeper engagement with the United States government. And President Biden acquiesced to that. So we now, that is the technicians on both sides, uh, will take the lead to review other areas of this cooperation. You know, if there are some, if there are snacks in the relationship, we have a chance now to to smooth them out so that we can have a closer relationship with the current with the with the U.S. Uh, currently, the president now is in the leader session. I just had to come out to speak to you, and at which time he'll be making an intervention, or I think several interventions in the areas of peace and security in Africa. He will speak about the situation of terrorism and that is growing in, in West Africa. You mean President Weah is going to speak about those issues? Yes, in the plenary session he will make what we call an intervention, a submission. Okay. Uh, during the plenary session is where the, the exchanges go on, uh, uh, the exchanges between and amongst Presidents. Why is President Weah so concerned about peace and security? Because, as you know, Liberia itself has uh, just come from, when I say just, it's been many years now, but we have experienced a very devastating civil war. Therefore, with the threat of war in other countries, war and the threat of war in other countries, it is very important because we are interconnected. Hello, if there are any so Kenyan violence in one West press, African country Kenyan is delegation violence in one country is also, is also uh, a threat to our own right country. Now. So for Thank the you. president, he has articulated this at the ECOWAS summit. And for him, the threat of violence that is, is violence and war in the, in the Maghreb and other part uh, in West Africa that is growing through terrorism is very critical. So those, that is one of the areas he's going to speak about. And also he'll talk about food security, and then he'll talk about uh, uh, cultural engagement, the, the engagement of, of various culture and how the, our American counterparts can look at our own cultural history and, and, and collaborate further. So the president will be making these and many other interventions. But the, the leader summit, the leader session is ongoing currently, and the president is still there. After that, there will be what we call a working lunch, where President we are will join the other presidents along with uh, their U.S. counterpart for a working lunch where there will be only the, the leaders, the presidents, and, and their U.S. counterparts. And then after that again, they will have... What usually happens day. during that working lunch? <laughs> it's where you have most of these tete a tete and where some of the issues that were raised previously in the sessions are discussed in a little bit more detail okay. and for more and about more specific things. You listen to pres the president of... of uh, Senegal, Marquis Sall, who spoke on behalf, who's the chair of the AU, who spoke on behalf of the African Union, on behalf of Africa, uh, where he mentioned one critical issue of, of sanctions, uh, and where the U.S. have passed some uh, laws, basically, you know, <laughs> sanctioning the entire Africa. That is a critical issue for the African leaders, and we want that to be addressed, you know, and how the U.S. engages with Africa in this manner in terms of peace and security, trade, economic affairs. Those are the things that will be discussed at the, 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 the working lunch with President Biden. So overall, I would say the President, uh, his visits, and I would like to pluralize them, uh, out of the country has been very, very, very successful. And he had to take the bull by the horns to come out and, and do the final lap so that Liberia can get all of the benefits from uh, these visits. Honorable Commissioner, my name is Gerald, quite a front page Africa, talking about the commitment to a peaceful election. What are some of the specific points the president stressed during that meeting, if you were brief? And secondly, there are a lot of agreements, bilateral agreements going on, and agreements going on with private sectors. As the, the summit ends today, what are some of the, the things there for Liberia? Would there be any an agreement? Sounds as it's been done with other countries? 
But I don't know which country is assigning agreement, but some, for, for Liberia, we already have existing instruments that we have be, been consolidating, like our partnership with the U.S. in terms of financing for elections. Uh, we also, the U.S. government is also part of our, our, our e, uh, private sector and government road fund. Uh, for example, currently, the road has been paved from Kanta to Saklipie, and then if we have additional funding onwards, it's part of a, a new system of road financing that is being also supported by the government of the United States. So the president used the opportunity to thank President Biden for the support that we are already receiving from the U.S. government in many areas, in education, in road construction, and in, in support to our budget through the U.S. Uh, since its financing to our budget through the World Bank. And, and we are also pleased about that because they have been very uh, 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 consistent about that. But in the private sector, there are continuous engagement. Uh, we have had meetings with some uh, delegation, I mean, some uh, private delegations who are interested in uh, various sectors. Uh, one of the sectors is climate financing for Liberia. And uh, so the delegations will be going to Liberia to meet with Professor Tabe, who leads our climate change uh, uh, effort. And then in addition to that, uh, the president had a meeting quite recently with uh, the president of uh, President and Chairman of Arcelor Metal, uh, who is the largest investor in Liberia for them to expand their investment to over a billion dollars, and that will be consummated. He, he, right after that meeting, he delegated a committee to try to consummate. So things are happening as we go along, but I can say to you that the benefits are enormous. Now you ask about the president's uh, commitment to peace, to peace and, and election. Yeah. Well, he already has a history of that. Even when he was not president, as a member of the opposition, when the elections results were not favorable, he uh, uh, went along and, and gave his support to the succeeding to the succeeding government, uh, and he served as peace ambassador. He has a record of that. Now, our commitment to peaceful elections in Liberia has been demonstrated as a government. Even when the pres when the ruling party lost elections, the president was the first to take the phone to give a congratulatory message. We have had, since Mr. President became president, we have had several by-elections. And all of those elections were now won by the, by the ruling party. The opposition won even in key areas. Yet, the president and the government welcome that as a will of the Liberian people. So our commitment has already started. Uh, all the processes leading up to the elections, you know, where we have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, these are the indicators of a free and fair election. So the president was only, yes, re he was only reiterating his commitment to free to free and fair elections because we have a democratic space. And he told President Anyone Biden like to that cover it is very Madagascar important. And that it is, the Millennium it is, Challenge Corporation it is very in, by that meeting. It is very Madagascar it is very important. Yeah, that, that's a good background sign. It's very important for, over here by for, the press information for the, desk for the development of our country for us to have free and fair elections. It's also very important for the will of the Liberian people to be allowed to prevail. And these are the commitments that Mr. President made as we go into 2023. So, Commissioner Namwe, I want to ask this question. I heard about, I heard uh, President Biden talk about 55 million, you know, uh, to Africa. This, uh, this uh, 55 billion. billion, sorry, 55 billion um, for investments in Africa. How is this money, you know, you know, distributed. Or no, how no, is it what is, distributed? At, at the end of this conference, mm -hmm. uh, a conference document is going to be issues that will draw up the parameters. Okay. Mostly, it's going to be private sector investment, but there are already key areas that have been targeted. Key among them is infrastructure, health, education. So the U.S. will use its own mechanism in collaboration with African countries for the, the support to African countries in the terms of investment. So that is the overarching amount, around 55 billion. Now, each country is going to go back. For example, Liberia, we have ongoing engagements with the U.S. government. Our priorities are infrastructure, education, health, and with the support that we're already receiving, we are going to ask for increased support. You know, and somebody talk about compact. Yes, we passed all the indicators in compact, but you have to remember that so far, this period, there's only just over, I think, five countries that have actually have a compact giving. 
What does it mean for Liberia? It means now we continue our engagements. The Minister of Finance is due to come to the U.S. next month to continue the engagement with the MCC so that we can start developing our own compact so that the next announcement, it means Liberia is going to be there. So it's just the procedure and that people are not understanding. It doesn't mean that the president came in. They say, oh, the president came in, they didn't get nothing. There are 49 presidents, yeah, and leaders. Each country is not at the same level of engagement with the MCC. We just passed the MCC a few a few months ago. Our engagement is continuing, and we believe we'll get another comeback very soon because of the engagements that we are having. It's a plus, it's not a negative, it's not a minus. My, 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 na my name yeah. is Pearl Matibi. I'm a White House correspondent. Thank you. And uh, I read the uh, statement about the meeting regarding the 2023 elections. I was very interested in that. Um, I write for Defense Work, which is, uh, on, I heard you mention something about peace and, and security. How did you find the peace and security governance forum? And then could you speak to the issue of war crimes and to activists like Adama Dempster, who is actually here in Washington, supported by the Human Rights Watch. Could you speak to that, please? Well, uh, since the end of the Civil War, let me go to the issue of, of war crimes. Since the end of the Civil War, we have had many governments. Now, it was President Weah who was the first president to have taken the first legal step under our Constitution for us to have such uh, uh, a system for, for, for accountability for crimes against humanity, war crimes, and economic crimes. For us to do that, we have to do some legislative, we have to have the right legislative framework. So our president has already taken the first step, which is to officially ask our legislature, our parliament, to begin the process of reviewing how we're going to do that. While we are here in the, in the U.S., uh, uh, we had a meeting with the U.S. Uh, Special Envoy, on, 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 on uh, war crimes, mm -hmm. and, and we have said to, to, to them... To Is this Ambassador uh, uh, Von Schack? Yes, she had a meeting with the Deputy Speaker of our Parliament yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our position to her has been that we want a collaborative effort. We have a country that has a weak systems that are still being developed. How are we going to fashion accountability? Which, uh, who's going to pay for it? How are we going to create a legal framework? So it is not that there is no political will on the part of our government for accountability for war crimes, crimes against humanity and economic crimes. Our government has taken the first step, but we are working now with our partners so that we can work out the processes, the procedures, the legal framework, and the financial framework for this to happen. So it's an ongoing engagement, an ongoing conversations. Yes, all of the activists, including all of those in Liberia who are, are victims, are anxious for this to happen, but it's a process that is ongoing, and we believe that there will, in the end, be accountability for. But for uh, overall, are you satisfied with your, uh, you know, coming to the uh, Washington and your engagements in, in general? We are very satisfied, but we know we have to keep engaging. Like you were mentioning, the Minister of Defense of Liberia was a part of the the the, the, the Defense and Security Conference. He also had another meeting at the Pentagon. Why are we doing this? Because you know Liberia is one of the few countries in Africa that is contributing peacekeepers to Mali. And, and we have received some support indirectly from the, U, the U.S. government through the U.N. Uh, Peace Building Fund to fund our troops. We are asking for more equipment. The Minister of Defense made some requests to his U.S. US counterpart Attention, for more please. equipment for our troops. We understand and we that there is uh, some favorable a responses. Issue, and in addition to that, terrorism in the... In, in, Parts of West Africa so and in the Sahel the is creeping closer and closer. Having some issues so we want a framework with our American counterparts issue. for us to address this menace before it becomes a full-blown crisis in the, in the West African region. So on peace and security, our Minister of Defense has been leading the conversation and we have made a lot of strides. But I'm not saying that it's all bread and butter. There's still a lot of work to do, but we are committed and we are going to continue to engage. Do you have a card? I'll send you the letter of what we will come in. Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Commissioner, now with the delegation before you coming, uh, there's something happening outside of the summit, and it centers around the president and his family. Timothy, we are being mentioned by the president, uh, the, the secretary of state, and then, of course, the chairman on foreign relations mentioned Timothy. He lives in his district in New York. Yes. So how has Timothy... Uh, Go in America, in American soccer, you, see, you know. When the president said that Liberia has strong historic ties, there are many Liberians who have come to America. I just yesterday I just had a meeting with uh, uh, Representative Bia 
is a state representative for Rhode Island, a librarian of Liberian ancestry. And it shows how connected we are. So with Timothy, he's the epitome of that, you know, born of a Liberian father, Jamaican mother, born in America, American citizen. He has played for the American national team. So it has resonated uh, here in Washington and a lot of commendations coming for his performance. And it just shows how closely linked we are. And, and so when the president met, because they watched the game for 90 minutes, uh, uh, the Morocco game, and they spoke about that also. And they spoke about a lot of other things about how Liberia and the U.S. can further expand this historic relationship for the mutual benefit of both countries. So finally, before we leave you, Commissioner Namwe, the so president... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, and we'll give the final question. Oh, okay. So, uh, Commissioner Namwe, before leaving Liberia, there was this rumor that uh, you were personally robbed of a <laughs> huge sum of money um, by your, your staff, and uh, who is only wrong. And secondly, the, the delegation, the government prolonged trip out of Liberia is causing the government a huge sum of money. How do you respond to these allegations? But the, the first one said, I don't know how to respond because the multiple one, one of the stories said I got robbed in London. One of the stories said I ran away with the president money and other stuff. So please, I really respect from Peace Africa. I don't want us to drive on frivolous rumors and nonsense. And yeah, you had the opportunity yes. to respond yeah, no, to the Liberians that are watching. So my response is that I don't want to because to even continue to respond would give legs to a very nonsensical story. You know, it's absolutely nonsense. No iota of truth in any of those. In fact, if you look at some of the rumors they said I was stranded in London because I didn't have a visa to come here. I wasn't part of the president's delegation and all of that. So we don't need to... The, the, the facts can speak for themselves. I'm here, I'm talking to you, and I think the second question is of more importance about the dividends from the president's visit. Now, it was a long visit, we have to admit, but it was long because it was necessary. The president went to Morocco after he left Liberia to the Medif, Medif Forum. And after the media forum, he was privileged to have gone to the biggest port on the Mediterranean, the port of Tangier. And as a result of that visit, maybe I should articulate country by country some of the benefits that have come. As a result of that visit, already we have the free port of Liberia now benefiting from the technical support that the port of Tangier uh, uh, is going to give. They will sign an agreement not just technical support, but also equipment. Now, how is that important? It is important because the turnaround time at the port of Monrovia is slow. The port of Monrovia works for like about eight hours out of the 24 hours. And that has an impact on the cost of goods and services. So if we improve the infrastructure at the free port, we improve the technical capacity. It has direct benefits for the ordinary Liberian. After that, the president went to Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt, where he participated in the climate change conference as a climate advocate and also as a champion for climate financing. He is the champion and leader for the African leaders on our concern that climate financing should change so that those who contribute more to the destruction of our ozone layer should pay more to those who are being most affected. And as a result of that, we got a financing arrangement where over a hundred billion dollars is going to come to countries like Liberia. Now, I was speaking to Professor Wilson Taber a few days ago. Right now, we have funding already, even before we can go further, new funding commitments for, for to deal with sea erosion in Sino and to also deal with sea erosion in West Point. I think the initial amount is around $10 million. That's not counting what Liberia is going to get as a country as a result of the climate trading that we are going to, uh, carbon trading that we are going to do. Because if you realize that Liberia has about 40% of the, the, the upper Guinea forest that has ozone capture, we are going to benefit from that. The president articulated the position of Liberia sufficiently and the benefits are going to flow. After that, the president went to Paris where he had a meeting with President Macron and participated in the Paris Peace Forum. And after the Paris Peace Forum, he went to Qatar to meet with... Uh, to watch his son play and also as a guest of FIFA, but then he used it to have a bilateral meeting with the Emir of Qatar and he asked for one critical thing, support 
additional support. I say additional because already Qatar has been funding the Lofa Road project through Badia, which is the Arab Bank for Development and Investment in Africa. Badia is one of the key financiers, and Qatar is one of the key financiers of Badia. So the president asked the Qatari Emir for more support for phase two. Now we have funding from Banga to uh, uh, Salaye. Now the next phase from Salaye to Konya, and then from Konya to Vonjima, from Vonjima to Menikoma. That's why he's looking for funding. Why in, 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 in uh, Egypt, he also had a meeting with, the, with the, the president of the UAE. And the next week, the UAE and Saudi Arabia sent delegations to Liberia to do assessment on the road. So as the president is going along, the benefits are coming. So we are expecting, we, we, we asked for about $100 million for additional financing for Lofa Road. And the Emir said, yes, he's going to send his team to do assessment, which they usually do, to look at the financing mechanism, which they usually do. But every time he has promised the president, he has delivered. So we know, for me, it's money in the bank from Qatar, because they are going to give funding to Lofa Road. The president didn't ask for anything personal. After, after that, we flew back to Monaco, where he received an honor from Prince Albert, and he's also going to get support for youth development, for youth capacity building, and that will be announced subsequently once the agreement is signed. So the president is not working about, he's working hard. You know, somebody said he's absentee president, and, you know, and Liberia is on autopilot. I think it was the, it better to be on autopilot, where the plane is going and moving properly, than to be sleeping at the wheels, as was done in the past by the, the Mr. Baga who made a criticism. You know, it's better to be autopilot. Autopilot means the plane is going well. And it lands well. But if you're sleeping at the wheels, then you're heading for destruction. So if you call the president being auto, Liberia being autopilot and it's sitting smoothly and you, you don't want to see the reality. You know, look at some of the plaudits that he has received. How is inflation in Liberia today in spite of COVID nineteen? We're in, in single digits when it was 27% at the time the president took over. Don't quote me. Look at the World Bank statistics and data. So when people say that it's, the country is on autopilot and inflation is going down, the foreign exchange rate is stable, then you have to ask it, but then is autopilot not the right way to, to carry the country? So the president continues to work very hard for the country in spite of the unfounded and business criticisms from from the detractors, including members of the opposition. But he is a man who remains focused, so my and he will continue to remain focused so to deliver final, for the people of Liberia. My final question before we take leave of you, Commissioner Mandanambe, uh, I heard you talk about all of the different places where the president went, and I'm sure he went with uh, different delegations. Are all of those people with him here in the no, U.S.? No, 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 no. Okay, so we have like the head of FDA, the, national, the chairman of the National Investment Commission with us in Morocco. After the Morocco meeting, they went back. After Shami Sheikh, uh, Professor Tape went back to Liberia with other members of the delegation. So he's not just taking a, a slew of people around with him. If I myself had to go leave the delegation, go back to Morocco, and later on I went to London to attend the IMO uh, Executive Council meeting, and then I joined him uh, in Paris, and then we came to the U.S. together. So it's a relatively small delegation. I think we have uh, five ministers all together, along with the president and his security, along with you, members of the press. When does the president uh, leave for Liberia? Uh, he's leaving on Saturday to, to head back uh, to Liberia through Accra. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. So that was the... All right, so thanks, viewer, for watching. Commissioner yeah. of the yeah. Liberia... Maritime Authority, a member of the Liberian delegation, is headed by President George Weah. His name is Mr. Len Eugene Namwe. He was speaking to us about his assessment on uh, this summit and the Liberian delegation, especially the President's engagement with U.S. President Joe Biden and other dignitaries what Liberia stands to benefit from this trip. And he responded to some of the rumors and allegations that, has, that have plagued this uh, delegation since it left Liberia nearly uh, 40 days now. He said, though, uh, the trip is long, it's unprecedented. He admitted, he, he acknowledged 
that it is costly, but the dividends are immense and they will help to the development of Liberia, especially to the infrastructure sector and towards the fight against climate change. Uh, he also mentioned about the President's recommitment to promoting free, fair, and transparent election, and the Liberian government <laughs> anticipated 20 million from the U.S. government support to election for the six countries that he said have been highly ranked for promoting democracy in their respective countries. Liberia is one of them, along with uh, Sierra Leone, Madagascar, Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo. So that's what's happening here today at the Water E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C., where the summit for uh, that's the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit is climaxing today. And you listen to him that the president is currently in plenary with uh, his counterparts, including President Joe Biden. And after that, he will be making a presentation during the, the working launch. And front page Africa has been granted access to cover that event. Security is tight, but if the opportunity is there, we hope to bring live that particular event, the president's presentation. My name is Gerald Kwanyene. I've been uh, here from the beginning, bring, uh, bringing the full coverage of the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit. And I want to say thank you for watching. We hope to reconnect you with other activities later in the summit. Goodbye from Washington, D.C. And that's uh, the Liberian media delegation officials on our desk. Liberian desk waiting to be called to provide coverage of the working launch that the president is expected to make his presentation.